Hi, I'm Alan Gray Eyes, Festival Director for the Sakihiwe Festival. We're working alongside the High Commission of Canada in the United Kingdom to bring you a series of conversations between incredible Indigenous artists and the trailblazers who have inspired them. But before we begin, I've asked Elder Martha Peet to help us get everything started in a good way. Burton Cummings Takarvanit Huli Iluanit Treaty One Tamna Ilitarizur Ingyok Tauru Marungni Iloyak Tauru Tapkunangan Sakihiwi Takurakshanik Iloyak Iloyak Tartun Huli Lo Ipa High Commission Canada Me Tavani Queen Nunanga Nitareo Akiani Ilitarati Lugin Hitamaning in your tinning, a young in Marek Tuning Tuakti Chakata Mata Tap Goat Malik Tao Yumakata Tuning in your taxaning Hanakata Mata Koyana Koyagi Routing Tap Goat Sugluk Ban Tao Nang Kupia Ming Arthur Inuit Tai Tuak Taxanic, Ingor Taxanic, Hanakata Himali Mata Tadba Tuang in Natatkan Tuha Lugit, Okamakata Mata Inuit, Okao Hing Nick at the Chak shooting Tadba Tuha Larang of Kit, Ekakata Tunga Tap Kuning and Anana Malo Atata Malo Okao Hing Ning Okao him maringing, Tadba Kauri Magama Inuktitut Okao he nightly raw catalit mata, tap quad, sugluk pat to her look it. Kovia Nakton, Okao he, Okao hingi, Inuktitu marit mata, the chilling mute out lunga to her catarapkin. Type cunning and Okamadrutinik, Okamacha, Katak shooting, Induktitu chak shooting. Taimana. Honor Song is a part of a Government of Canada program designed to advance reconciliation and renew the relationship with Indigenous people. I'm just outside the Turtle Island Community Centre where we work with Mumaway to produce the Turtle Island Block Party every summer. Tonight's episode features Alyssa B in conversation with the legendary Willie Thrasher. I'll also join our host to chat about her uncle's group, the Sugluk Band. To get everything started, Alyssa B is going to perform the Sugluk Band's Ballad of the Runaway Girl. Please sit back and enjoy. Il a né de voir le malheur se vise mal au moins que l'or se vite et ma qui se a né à l'or mal. Au lieu de l'or à ma moitié de monde. Tu as non à l'or à l'or à l'or à l'or à l'or à l'or. Qui m'a ré à l'or 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 à l'or. Yes. 
so young and natural unlike most of the girls then came along a man with stars like stars in his eyes and ran away with the girl behind and that's the end Someday you will revive the scene with no care in the world. The ballad of the runaway girl won't exist that very long. Then the meantime, all the tables are turned since she turned to tear. Kapiasuhulangikalorsuguisumalohulangikalorsugutaymakisenyulamaulareyhalawama So welcome to the third episode of uh, Honor Song. With me tonight is the, the wonderful Alyssa B. Um, Alyssa B, can you um, just tell us a bit about yourself or audiences that might not be familiar with your music? Yes, I'm a singer songwriter, um, also a filmmaker that, although that's been put on the side a little bit because I've been so busy the last 15 years uh, touring, making albums. Um, yeah, I'm from a small town called Saluit, and it's in Nunavik. It's a northern, uh, most north, uh, it's the tip of uh, actually northern Quebec in, uh, in the Arctic, I guess I should say. Um, small Inuit community. I grew up there until I was 21 uh, when I moved to Montreal. And um, yeah, it's crazy. Actually, I was 22. Uh, before then, I worked with, you know, social services. I worked with the kids at the school. I did a whole bunch of jobs. Also, I was a journalist for a TV um, a summer jobs in my small town uh, for a TV uh, in Nunavik. And also, I did radio. So I guess communication's always been a, a passion it still is even though I'm considered a singer songwriter performer I really do feel like I'm a I'm a I like to tell stories and be like a link and a bridge between people and different I guess different cultures even I've, yeah I've seen the beauty of your home community and some of your music videos and then mm. um, Saluit uh, uh, Hollywood sign on the hills yeah 
that's new. That that was put before I was. Uh, well, that was put. Yeah, a few years ago while while I was no longer living in Salu. So yeah, it's fun. It's very. It, it is very Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood of the north. Yeah. And so it's on the tip of northern Quebec. Inuit territory spans. Does it span the entire north of Canada? It's definitely the whole north of Canada. Of course, there are different uh, um, uh, traditions and languages like the Dene people that are First Nations and also out west, to, uh, nor uh, like north of BC. But yeah, definitely the Arctic part of it where if you think about it, once you have no more trees, that's where the Inuit are. That's <laughs> where you kind of have to see it, right? And we expand all the way to um, Greenland, and then of course on the other side, Alaska and Siberia. So it is quite a big amount of territory with so little people, like very small population. I mean, we are what, 15,000, 16,000 just in Northern Quebec in all the 14 coastal villages. It's it's a huge territory uh, in a lot of it inhabited, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy if you think about it. And the arts are quite prolific, like Inuit art. I mm. know you've, uh, in Winnipeg, there's a new Inuit art center, um, almost ready, almost completed. Um, in my household, even, even we have some beautiful paintings, some textiles and some carvings. Like, uh, obviously you're a part of this incredible indi or Inuit music movement. Um, where did, why, why, why does it seem like the Inuit are so pro such prolific artists my goodness uh, i think we're i mean i i normally wouldn't even say that because i find that overall indigenous and first nations artists like uh, out west also it's so prolific prolific but yeah i, I guess in a way um, i do have uh, old sculptures of uh that I, I got to inherit um, that are quite old, smaller pieces like my great aunt who, I think it was their way of telling a story. Like when you look at the carvings, it's not all polar bears or seals, or there are actually women praying like this, kneeling, or a woman with a baby in the back. So they tell a story. They tell a story of um, like, like the praying woman is probably when they were newly introduced uh, to Christianity. So that's how I see it. I think they've always had a way to tell the stories because every time um you know through dreams through very very crazy uh animism like there's something really strong probably because of the land of the vastness we have no trees uh we are um yeah very connected to the animals even up to now so i think there's some visions that are very, very, it's very easy to imagine things when you're in the North. It can be very scary, but also it can be very spectacular and it's very wild. I think that's why I think it was important for these songs to continue, although they changed from very traditional storytelling. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, where they actually even sang about uh, people like um, confronting each other in order to make peace, they would make an event and then they would gather everyone in igloos and then there would be like not a fight but a combat in a way to, in order to resolve something. They so use they use music and chanting to for those kind wow. of things. So yeah, it's very rich. So I guess it's only normal for us to all uh, you know take in also the, our North American uh, influences. Bob Dylan and Neil Young became very influential in our lives, um, folk music. But the storytelling is sort of the same, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and we're we're here to talk uh, today about or uh, tonight about Sugluk Band. Mm. Um, and I understand Sugluk was the original name of Saluit. Is, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. It's funny because I always thought Sugluk, they, they say either say Sugluk. Um, I asked my sister once, I said, why does it say Sugluk? Sugluk, Sugluk, Sugluk. And then she's like, well, if you think about our way of speaking, 
um, it has evolved so much, especially when we became, uh, when we had school teachers and also when uh, uh, syllabics were introduced because we had no written, we were not, we're oral, you know, tradition. So when all this was implemented slowly, of course, our, our way of talking and our dialect changed. So we say salut with two L's now, my hometown. But actually, if you think and listen to the elders um, who are very old, or if you listen to the recordings, even like in the 50s, they will probably say, Sagluit, sagluit with the g, with the g, and I just love that. And I, it's so. I think about my my parents. I think about my grandfather. So it's sagluit. It means a small, uh, skinny people. So we're thinking probably in that back then, this area was known to have had maybe a famine. Okay. So that's what we're guessing. So there are really crazy names <laughs> in the north including our names. I'm also Hopanor, it means a, a big bird, Hopanor Jok. Um, yeah. And um, I, I was uh, talking with Martha Pete um, before we were recording the introduction. She mentioned that what she really loved about uh, Sugluk or Sugluk? Mm -hmm, Sugluk, right. Sugluk band was um, that they would sing um, entire Inuktitut phrases, whereas at the time it was very common for people to abbreviate words mm. is, what like and, and I'm curious to know like the Inuit language is it mostly verbs is it very description descriptive languages or is it more like nouns where there's a proper name for various things oh my it's so complicated to try to explain that because I've never really had to think about that right I, I just speak it but it's definitely fun as a songwriter if you think about like long uh words it's actually one word let's say uh one of the Sugluk's uh song that i absolutely love my uncles actually so if you think about it, it's pretty much my whole family in that band um, and my uncle George Hakayo was definitely very influential in my in my life as a singer songwriter because he's made many girls and boys dance like in the 60s 70s kids that were sent to residential schools so their music is still very 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 um, emotional for a lot of people because it brings them back that innocence that I guess before things changed and shifted and went into um, a little bit of a chaos where uh, suicide rates um, started coming in before it wasn't like that in the 70s. So uh, when I see my family members or whenever they play in Salud or in the North, you don't see young people going into the dance floor. You see people like your mother, your uncle, because they're being brought to that moment when it was so exciting for them, but yet they didn't know it, but it was huge trans transition, trans transition for, um, for the culture, for their tradition. So yeah, um, is one word for you guys, but it actually says I was, Definitely, I, I, you know, so it means I was pleading or I was trying really hard, you know, because it's a love song, right? It's like, I, you know, so I, I did all my best. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's really great. <laughs> it seems like a very poetic language. It can definitely be very poetic because, um, like, uh, for a TV show, I got to uh, translate uh, La Vie en Rose by Edith Piaf. <laughs> Try to translate la vie en rose in Inuktitut is really impossible because rose, pink, for us, we translate it to bubble gum. So it's like saying, I see life as a bubble gum. That's okay. how I translated it. So it's very, it's also inventing words. So it's very free in a way. So I don't really have anybody or any references to translating or singing um, as to, I guess, French people who are very, you know, very strict in their um, 
way of speaking or things you don't change as to Inuit language, I think it's very exciting for me as a singer songwriter because I'm able to and also hearing my cousins, let's say they'll say, wow, you said that phrase. It's so like, it's so poetic, like for them to think about life differently as to very traditional survival mode, then I can, you know, add a little bit of colors and yeah, it's fun. It's fun. That's beautiful. And is that kind of um, the inf influence that your uncle's band had as well was seeing oh. the, the language? in a contemporary music setting and feeling a connection to it? Is that, is that what happened when you were younger? Oh, of course. It's also um, telling the story. I mean, they were just so cool too, right? They were rock and roll, long hair. Um, they were really great musicians also. Uh, they did great harmonies. I mean, they really, you could tell they were really inspired by you know, the rock scene, the British uh, rock bands, um, they were really into that. Uh, of course, Dylan, you know, Neil Young. Um, yeah, just listening to them and being able to, and also talking about um, love relationships to all the chaos and also having been in the South and coming back home to your very traditional father who misses his nomadic life because very recently before they were still living out in the land in the summer there in the winter camp. So uh, they were also telling stories about the fact, you know, a lot of it, my uncle's songs, um, a lot of the great songs actually, earlier ones are talking about his dad who was a very traditional list, uh, you know, so I guess also what's beautiful is feeling like they're shifting, you know, that you hear that, wow, my father was this great hunter. Um, I'm also trying to be a strong man, Inuk man, but yet he's, you know, he's also trying to be out there and modern. So yeah, I think that's what moves me more than anything with those songs because I can just imagine the land. They talk a lot about the land also because that vision changed very quickly for us from very nomadic uh, people uh, living off the land, living in igloos, living like with the animals literally um, to being put in a settlement where they're told your kids have to go to school, the Hudson Bay Company will be there. They will from now on be uh, hospitals that will take care of you if you're sick. Um, as to just before that, they were, you know, pretty much free on their own. Yeah. And happy and, and not starving. I mean, that's also what I understand a lot is that people would tell these residential school uh, kids, parents, your kid will learn something, become something, uh, probably saying something like he's going to become a lawyer or, and also he's never going to be hungry. Well, a lot of people I know would tell me we were never hungry when we were out in the land. We were never cold. And it, and it seems to me like, since it's like an oral tradition, maybe the songs are an extension of that. Um... Like, like it seems to me like you're you're explaining that Sugluk, uh, and I am I mispronouncing that so, Sugluk or Sag Sugluk, yeah, Sugluk, yeah. Sugluk, um, yeah, they've been capturing history and recording history so that younger folks like yourselves can have a connection with the with the way things used to be. Is, is and um, I'm kind of wondering like when you heard that and you saw them like taking stages across the country or, or having their music played in different different radio stations and settings. Did you imagine yourself um, like taking the stage in Paris or being on magazine covers? What kind of effect did that have a, on you as a, as a young person? Um, I think the only thing I knew was that I felt good with the idea of being around music, live music. Uh, because I had these guys that were like, if they did it, did it, then I can, I certainly am like in blood where, because I'm also adopted, right? So it's actually my biological uncle, but I think we have that music uh, in us because my brother's a great musician too. Um, 
uh, much better than me. Uh, so I think we were very much inspired by my uncle. So it's like, what some somebody in the family had to do something being so inspired by them right because they were just great melodists also um uh, so yeah i guess in a way without knowing although, although i probably thought tiffany or debbie gibson were my superheroes it's probably my uncles right <laughs> 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 yeah, they're a huge influence because it's also tracing our history and our, yeah, it's also the 60s, 70s era, which is very, very, very important for, I think, all indigenous people where things really changed and things were like, okay, we are no longer nomadic people, right? We've just been, yeah. I think, yeah, we say nomadic in English, but there's probably a, a more poetic way or, or thought-provoking way to say it in a nuktutu because mm. uh, I want I think like yeah when we think about nomadic it's like oh they're just scraping out a living but it seems to me like the Inuit like, like a lot of indigenous nations had philosophy mm. had astronomy had science and 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 healing and and everything like just to take care of take care of each other and yeah build, build futures and uh yeah so i think it's visionaries it's too right well, and always inventing if you think about inuit for example how they use tools if you look at history like uh, the last a thousand years it's so many things that they invented they invented the the kayak the kayak as you call them uh, igloo we got we call it or you guys call igloo um so goggles to 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 be able to see really bright uh, snow and light this little little um, glasses with the tiny little little crack uh, to to be able to i mean you have so when we think about inuit or indigenous people in general we always think like it's like they're stuck in the past but right now they're just ready for new things all the time, inventing and adapting. So I think we also have to see that side of a very, uh, because I think as an artist for me, what's been hardest is being told, oh, you, you don't live in Salud, oh, you don't live in Inglis anymore. Oh, um, you sing in English? I'm like, hey, <laughs> I, I do what I want. What's really important is that my roots, I know my roots. Uh, nobody, you know, needs to tell me you have to, we have to do this. It's because it's the, the view has to change also about us is that we're a very, we're in the modern world and we're just trying to like, okay, but we are still also hunting. We're still eating our raw meat and we're still, you know, very connected to the land. And creating beautiful art. Yeah, oh my God, creating and also the the changing and the way we create. It's it's so exciting to be a creator or an artist right now because pretty much anything, you can pretty much find anything out there, inspire yourself and try new things. And I think Inuit were so hungry for, for that because I think the last 50 years have been very, very challenging for us. And um because of the colon colonism and all, all, all this, the violence, you know, how we felt like we felt like we were told we were inferior. And I think we kind of started believing that. And now we're like, oh. So that's why I think it's important to, to listen to people like my uncle's band or Willie Thrasher, you know? Yeah. And so we're, yeah, tonight we're paying tribute to um, Willie Thrasher and Sogluk. Uh, Sogluk, Sogluk. Yeah. And I was wondering, like, obviously they, they had a lot of influence on you, but who were some of the Inuit women that might have influenced you um, when you were coming up? Um, it's funny. We always say that back then, I think for a lot of us, we looked up to uh, I guess Inuit women, in a way, were more like your people in your community, or the the the, the politician Mary Simon, um, or people around you, very strong women. 
always in the presence, but I think when it came to rock or uh, singer songwriter, there's very little women. So I guess in a way, um, like Susan and Luca, when I when I heard her for the first time, I was I was about fifteen, and I we got to play a, a, a tape, and it got to my village, and it played, and I was like, what? So a girl, like a girl can do this? Like I can, I can now dream of becoming maybe a singer one day. Before that, it wasn't really possible in my head. It was just like wow. it's something you do. Uh, either you work at the um, municipal office or you're, um, I don't know, interpreter and you also play music. That's kind of, you know, a side thing. But when I heard Susan, it really struck something very strong in me and I was like, I could relate to her, you know? Um, yeah, Susan, of course, was um, was a huge influence. And then PJ Harvey came and then I, <laughs> I discovered that very raw side of me that really liked to act and uh, yeah, very many influences. I wonder what the young Inuit girls and non-binary folks think when they see all of your accomplishments hmm. or your music? I wonder too. Um, I guess back then when I was going through also my identity um, crisis, I guess I, sh I should say when I moved here, it was really hard for me to hear things like you're like an ambassador or you're this and you're that. You represent the North. I'm like, well, I represent very little of the North. Also being brought up by elders. Um, yes, I could see myself as an entertainer, but to be the voice and to have a say in the society, it was really weird because I've always been, um, you know, raised my voice only if I was allowed among elders. So it, it was really strange for me. It's only now that I realized that it's really powerful for the kids, especially the kids. I, I mean, I just, whoever, adults, if they want to change, they will, if they, they have to capacity. But I think we still have a lot of chance with the kids. I mean, I grew up working with kids also. So it's really important for them to see someone who's doing something she loves, someone who accepts who she is, and someone who is not afraid to show her strength and also her vulnerable side and to be just alive and who who also maybe shows that they they care for themselves you know because it's it's we we really need to because when you're from a small town or a community you kind of have to feel like you do things for the community and with the community right but I think right now um, it's okay also to say, hey, I'm a mother. I'm trying really hard to be out there, work hard. I help people. I also have to do things that are fun for me. So I, I try to keep it fun with the kids a lot. And I really think about them when I write songs because yeah, they need to hear uh, truthful words and music. And incredible videos. I mean, <laughs> the thing I remember about you, or I think about when I when I think about Alyssa B is incredible visuals, incredible videos, and um, you know, having mm -hmm. pride, showing pride through those visuals. Yeah, and strength and showing, yeah, definitely. And also not excusing yourself as a woman. That's like most important. Just be who you are. We're all born with all different sides of feminine side, masculine side, non-binary, like all of this makes sense is, is you be free of who you want to be, you know? Yeah. Mm. So, um, I also wanted to know, like, is there any books or videos or, or films that people can maybe uh, watch or check out that, that would tell us more about uh, Sogluk uh, band and experience like where can they find more information about your uncle's band oh my goodness I wish I could 
I, I, I'm, yeah, they're getting old now, my uncle. So I have to make sure that I get to do something with them, which is something I really want to do because I'm slowly coming back to uh, filmmaking and documentary wow. also. Um, so I'm going to make sure we have updated versions of Saglug eventually in the next three years. <laughs> but actually, it's really hard to find uh, videos of them unless you really dig hard in YouTube. Um, but many places where you can learn a little bit more about, um, let's say my hometown, I did a documentary film uh, called If the Weather Permits, Si la but with the NFB uh, French side, but the English side also exists, version, I mean, um, there is that. Um, and in, in there you see my grandfather, who's Sagluk's father, uh, Sagluk's band member's father. But other than that, it's, it is really hard to find um, even books or films that were done directly in, uh, in Celluloid. But if you're in Canada, if ever you get to Canada, I think NFB, National Film Board of Canada, has amazing all documentaries that you could just go through. I think that's a really good place to go. And I think if you want to see a crazy film that that's a little, that's getting old already now. It's been what, almost 15, 20 years. Uh, Atanardo, the fast runner that won in Cannes with Zacharias Kunuk who did the film. I just recently watched it again and I'm, it's it's very much, talk, much talking about the Inuit world, the view, and it's it's a lot of suspense, a lot of drama also, yeah. um, based on this very old ancient uh, story. So it's, 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 it's fun. So I guess in visual um, videos, I've done a, quite a few of them in my hometown. Also one called Wolves Don't Live By The Rules of uh, Archival Images, um, the song by Willie Thrasher and one called Arnaq, where you see my hometown. Um, and yeah. Hollywood sign. And Hollywood sign, salut Hollywood sign. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned Willie. We were actually going to be joined by Willie today or tonight. And so um, I, I think this is a good opportunity to make that transition. So I want to say thank you to everybody. I'm going to be stepping out, but uh, Alyssa B is going to be joined by the one and only Willie Thrasher now. Two, one, zero. <laughs>
Nakomi Marelo Alan for this uh, beautiful opportunity to be um, talking to Willie Thrasher, who's a huge, huge influence in my life, musically, uh, spiritually, um, as an artist, as a whole being, because uh, he's influenced a lot of my music and I actually um, uh, covered uh, two of his songs. Uh, I, I would do an album called Willie Thrasher covers really because I love all his songs. So maybe Willie over there in Nanaimo, you could tell me a little bit uh, for the audience, of course, who don't know you. Uh, a lot of them know you, but for those who don't know you, maybe introduce yourself and maybe talk a little bit where you're from. Yes, my name is uh, William Lewis Thrasher. I'm originally from McLavick and spent some of my life in Inuvik and uh, I'm the son of Billy Thrasher and, uh, and Alice Bennett and and we are known as the Inubai Luis and my hometown we always love our traditional ways our music our dancing and and that's the way my life has been going. Mm. Uh, so Willie, I know you've done a lot of music albums. Um, when I was a kid, I started working for a TNI radio in Nunavik in Northern Quebec. And I remember very vaguely, it's, it's kind of far, but listening to your voice, your songs like um, songs like Silent Inuit. And I remember being very, very, um, captivated by your sound the it, there there's a storytelling and I guess there was some sadness too in silent Inuit that I remember some melancholy that I never really experienced with other musicians um very truthful words straightforward um so I guess many years later when I started working for TNI radio and I found the record um vinyl um uh, spirit child. I was very, I, I was very protected of that music. I didn't want anybody to steal it and put it somewhere in their office. So I remember being very inspired by you and many, many years later um, to actually meet you with my brother, Charlie, who's also a huge fan um, of you. And we met and you actually sang Silent Inuit because you were so moved to the other Inuit people in Montreal for that beautiful tour you did. So what? how was making um, this very huge album, um, uh, Spirit Child, how was it, how was that for you? What are your memories of that album? Well, that memories uh, brought a lot of uh, uh, good feelings inside. Cause I remember in, in the early 65, 66, 67, the uh, the Cordells, the band broke up, and I was a drummer at the time. And there was a person named Elijah Menrick, and uh, he was a, a CBC announcer in the Nubik. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day we were playing at the uh, in, at the uh, family hall for a dance for a New Year's dance, and he came up to our band and he asked us, uh, "Why didn't you write songs about your traditional ways, about how you hunt polar bears, how you?" live long time ago and how you go out hunting for seals and and your legends you know and your stories and how your community stay together and, and become so strong you know and and that uh and that elderly that came there that night uh, brought something back to me which i never lived it was taken away from me and and I look deep down inside and I started to realize that, hey, I'm an invaluable and this is our land, this is our traditional ways and this is the way we live. And all that was taken away from me. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I was an Arctic howling wolf, that something deep down inside started building up that I need to find out who I was, where I came from, who was my uh, ancestry and how we used to live. And for the first time in my life, I started feeling who Willie was, who Willie was really was, because the missionaries took all that away from me. And they took it away from my dad, my mom, my brothers and sisters. And 
it was a very, very sad, sad life, you know, that we went through mm -hmm. until that old man came that night and revived me, uh, starting letting me know that I am an inner body and I got to find out where I came from. Wow. And that's how my music started. So, yeah, when you're talking about how the missionaries came and, you know, pretty much wiped out all the kids from their communities and uh, took away this very, very precious, very important part of growing up is having parents, uh, being guided by your parents, especially being guided through your language, in your community, in the nature, all this was taken away and the kids were sent. So you were five years old and you were sent away with your brothers and sisters. So I guess that's what we hear in Silent Inuit, for example, right? Or with wolves don't live by the rules or Eskimo named Johnny. Uh, Eskimo named Johnny, I listened to you last week because I came to see you in Nanaimo uh, for a documentary and I just cried like this the whole time while you sang. I thought I was gonna just look at you and enjoy this moment. I did, but I had to let go because so many memories came because I think about my uncles, I think about my aunts who were sent away like you. So I guess these songs really, I guess were, they're a healing journey for you, right? Yes, uh, they're, they're, they're sort of like a survival thing that keeps me going. It's, it's just like a, a spiritual medicine that was passed down through your ancestry. It's sort of like a, a message from beyond that comes into your mind, your body, your soul, and then and then you bring out it through words, through music of what you really feel inside. It's, it's like a not cook the medicine man gives you a, sort of like a, a healing process that come that comes to you, like the song uh, uh, "Silent Inuit." I was so homesick in Ottawa and I was just really, really missing my brothers, my sisters and really missing uh, the band I used to play with and going out in the McKenzie River and eating muck duck and quark, you know, and uh, seeing the dog teams and uh, fighting with my friends, you know, I just started fighting for no reason at all, have fun with them. And mm -hmm. I started getting really homesick and silent Inuit was uh, came out as a very, very hurting song because I was hurting so much because I miss home so much and all of a sudden I just grabbed that guitar and I was really silent and I, and I said silent anyway, far away from home and that's how the song came by. What a powerful song. Even people who don't know Inuit so much listen to that song and they're just uh, I've had that experience. People hear something so raw in what you do. And uh, when I listened to you uh, last week, uh, sing um, uh, Eskimo Named Johnny, I forgot to tell you afterwards that it was so powerful and that your voice has not changed. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you are very strong. You're so yeah, I guess it's also your energy as your uh, former drummer, right? There's something yes. very vital in yeah. what you do. Uh, um, and I think what's really important also to talk about is that you um, are an ongoing singer-songwriter, even stronger uh, than, than before. You're, you're out there. You're creating all the time, like your new song that you just performed. Um, but before we get there, who were your influences? Maybe for the our British friends or English friends listening out there, um, it maybe they'll be really intrigued to know who were your influences, like musical influences. Uh, my my greatest influence were you know like the, like you know people like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and then, mm -hmm. you know. And then we mentioned uh, Neil Young, Moody Blues, Bob Dylan, and uh, you know, and other and other influence that came uh, came into my life is the musicians that I seen when I was traveling on the road, like Shannon Two Feathers, like a lot of other really really good native performers and Inuit performers from across Canada. 
which I got to know so, so many years ago. And I got to know them for one night, two nights when I was traveling. And I never seen them again, you know, like they were, they were a big part of my life. But for that moment, when I performed with them, when I went to, when I went to Saskatoon, when I went to Winnipeg, when I went to uh, Montreal or Ottawa or down the, uh, down the United States, I went to certain United States and I met all these native performers and, and even Alaska, John and Gayak and Whitehorse meeting all those performers for the first time in my life and performing with them once or twice only and I never see them again. And they gave me really, really big, big influence to carry on what I'm doing today. Buffy St. Marie and, you know, and it's, uh, it's been, been really deep down in my blood, all those influence and I'll never, never will forget them. And deep down in my heart, I say, thank, I thank them because without them, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah, uh, and how about uh, when you guys recorded, because there was this really interesting get together with different uh, indigenous musicians uh, for a sweet grass music um, and spirit child, of course, the recording of those sessions that were, you know, um, of course, helped through CBC um, technicians, I guess, or producers who wanted to help out these young indigenous artists uh, who had no, no, I guess, connection to recording industries. So that's like early 80s. So how was that for you, finding that moment and finding these people who were able to help you record? It was it was really really something special. Like uh, like I, here I was playing in Ottawa, playing in Toronto, Montreal, and uh, different communities, and 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 news and it was always this newspaper giving me calls. And CBC was mostly the influence. Uh, they always come find out where I am, and they interview me, and they ask me to come to Montreal to to do a recording or to do an interview at the uh, Chateau Laurier or, or CBC in, uh, in Ottawa. And uh, the media keep coming and uh, it's, uh, well, they gave me uh, you know, influence to carry on what I'm doing and showing, uh, showing what I really believe deep down inside of what I wanted to share to the world, what I lost or what I want to bring back. And this media and television and radio and the people that came up to me, like Elijah Menrick and uh, Brian Cousins, and there was a producer in Montreal, I forgot, Les McLaughlin, that really, uh, really started my career by releasing Spirit Child in uh, Montreal. I remember being in the 10th floor and recording at that, and then an interviewer would come from the third floor to come up to talk about the album, and you know, and uh, getting phone calls from uh, you know, and uh, Frobisher Bay and Yellowknife and you know all this media coming to me was uh, was really amazing. I really I really uh, started to realize that uh, my my message, my music, and the message from our ancestors was coming coming to life. It is pretty amazing. So you've had amazing people in your life, as much as you said, you know how um, the missionaries you know, took away so much, but yet you are someone who is very resilient. You are full of amazing spirit and very, very generous, um, reminding us that we are not alone, that we are different spirits, energies coming together all the time. So I think you, yeah, you touch people that way, indigenous or non-indigenous, um, because, you decide to you always focus on what good comes out of this world in a way even though you had like you said a hard life your parents and i think it's such it gives us a lot of um, reason to really celebrate life and that's how i see you someone who's always ready to to meet people with open arms and and you don't seem to see oh he's white or he's not or he's it's like all people are are opportunities to to share right yes mm. yeah I, like uh, the, the people the people that i meet uh, 
that through my lifetime is a, it's, it's a really, uh, it's, it's really special for me, like, especially when I go on the road early in the morning, I go on the Greyhound and I travel across Canada and meeting, meeting people from different communities and meeting, meeting different uh, musicians. And uh, it's, it's really, it's an amazing journey. It's, it's like a wolf traveling from, from the barren lands right up in the Arctic Ocean and howling and learning and living this life that we uh, lost and trying to bring back a lot of the traditional ways that we used to live a long time ago. And I was, I was one of the few lucky ones that I learned from, you know, from the greatest musicians that I met when I was young. And that's what made me who I am today. Mm. And if we think about, you know, that, that path, that road that you're taking and that how much you had given to us also, um, how do you see, you know, music or arts uh, are a form of storytelling that's changing, but yet it, it, it's, you know, very much uh, rooted to our Inuit heritage. So how do you see like how it's evolving like what would you have to say about that um i remember when i was a kid like like my mom used to tell me stories in inuktitut like how uh, how we live who was my grandfather who was my grandmother and and how the indians and inuit used to fight each other in their territory and and uh, you know, really, really, really powerful legends, which uh, which uh, my mom used to tell me. I used to sit down and listen to her. Then I used to sit down in my grandfather's lap, like like while we we're in the Arctic Ocean, and he used to tell me about his life, how he used to be a good hunter, how he used to live uh, in the igloos, and how he went after grease. I mean, polar bears. He went after the beluga whales, the caribou, and Arctic, uh, Arctic wolves, and the very, very uh, cold winters that uh, our, our traditional people live in. How powerful we are, uh, you know, to live through this. And uh, my grandfather used to tell me the story that this was a natural life. It was our daily life to live this way every day. And, and, uh, and that part too became a really big influence in my life of who I am and, and who I am today and how much change I went through today. And like we used to eat uh, uh, quark and uh, frozen fish, uh, caribou and muktuk and uh, igloos long time ago. And today it changed dramatically. Instead of me going out hunting, I go to McDonald's. It is uh, people, <laughs> and you order khor at McDonald's, right? <laughs> the well, first uh, caribou at McDonald's. <laughs> well, I want to be the first. Uh, uh, I want to be the first Inuit to invent it. Makwa and Makda. So, so, so it's something new that McDonald's got to negotiate with me. <laughs> imagine, imagine McDonald's. Uh, yeah, I, I. I <laughs> We should also mention, I should also mention that really you are one of the funniest people I know uh, with a lot of humor. And I think that's also coming from, uh, you know, very strong survival. Um, uh, yeah, inspiring people. You need humor. We need humor all the time. And I, I we laughed so much uh, last week and with the whole crew and uh, yeah, I guess we, we kind of have to, right? I think we have to look at the bright side and we are also in it. I think you know that more than me is that we live for the moment. We live in the moment. So um, I guess I think what also Alan wanna kind of wanted to know is any ideas of like artists or books or films of, from the Inuit world that you wanted to introduce or you would have thought about that I may not have um, mentioned? Um, I have uh, my brother named Anthony Thrasher, Tony Thrasher. He wrote in a book called Schedule Eskimo. Mm. And uh, it's a very, very powerful book. And, uh, and uh, when I read that book, it, it brought, it brought uh, a lot of uh, uh, 
uh, like a lot of good uh, places where we were when I wasn't born of how we used to live in the Klavik, how how my dad and mom used to go hunting and all that. And, and, uh, and especially the way Anthony lived his life. And he, 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 he ended up being a skidrow and uh, he was, he was called a skidrow Eskimo. And mm. he, he was one of the uh, brothers I got to know. And he was a very, very, very uh, lonely man, very tough. And he was, he was a scrapper fighter. He lived on the streets and, he, 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 he had nowhere to turn to all his life and he ended up in prison and he died in prison, I think. And, but before he went to the spirit world, he, he wrote a book called uh, 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 Schedule Eskimo. And it's a very, very powerful book. I encourage people to get that. Nakurmi Maria, look, I don't know what, uh, what to say after that. I mean, talk about resilience. And I think your music is still um, inspiring many, many, many people. And hopefully one day we'll get to go to the UK. And I know you were in the UK last year, right? I think that's- Yes, yeah. mm. yes, yes. So I wish you many, many more, uh, Willie. And maybe you could talk a little bit about your next album. I'm really excited about that. I wanna hear more. Like when when is it coming out? Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh still negotiating that mm -hmm. like we are just waiting for things to happen back home that on the land claims and stuff like that but uh, i'd like to introduce a song uh, the song that i did today like for the interview is called sacred fire peace and that's going to be the, uh, the title of the song uh, mind you it may change like yeah. I, I got to make three or four other songs which which i'm working on mm -hmm. right now and and that we, we, we don't know how the outcome of the album is going to be. But right now, the, the way we're living today, the whole world is hurting. The whole world is hurting. Yeah. And uh, when the whole world is hurting, your Mother Earth is hurting. You know, the, every living creature on this earth is hurting. And the only way that we could save this uh, tragedy and, 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 you know, to, uh, to save all these things that are happening is is to reunite the whole world together, is to bring all religion together as one. Mm -hmm. And I encourage people to look for the nine-pointed star, but I won't tell you what it is, but I encourage people to, to, to try to find it and investigate that. And it's good for all the people from four directions to start working together as human beings, to save our animals, to save nature, to save the earth, because this is the only way that we could save this beautiful earth of ours. The greatest healing power is within ourselves. And we got to put all our healing powers together. And then you won't believe how much healing is going to happen to the earth and how much we're going to save the creation from being destroyed. And I, I think I would just want to say we're also healing through you, Willie. Nakorme Marello. Yes, thank you very, very much. <laughs>